This is probably the idea you have on what hereditary elliptocytosis looks like. But what if I told you that this is also hereditary elliptocytosis, or even this? Has this upended your apple cart? Well, if you're like me, you thought that hereditary elliptocytosis, also called HE, would only have elliptocytes, because that is what the name leads you to believe. Also like me, you may have thought that it was a singular disease, but in reality, it is a group of disorders with three classifications based on the red cell morphology. They are common HE, which includes hereditary pyropoiclocytosis or HPP, sephiric HE, and Southeast Asian oval cytosis or SAO. Common HE is the one you will predominantly see at the microscope because it is common. It has a molecular defect involving the horizontal interaction between proteins of the red cell membrane skeleton, usually involving impaired spectrin dimer self-association or protein 4.1 deficiency. HPP has a combination of horizontal and vertical red cell membrane skeleton defects. It has a severely impaired spectrum self-association, which is the horizontal defect, and spectrum deficiency, which impairs the vertical interaction of the skeleton with the lipid bilator of the membrane. SAO has a mutation of the band 3 protein. Hereditary elliptocytosis is autosomal dominant in its inheritance, except for HPP, which is recessive. Sorry I ended up having to go into basic genetics here, but it is required to understand carrier status and homozygous versus heterogeneous in terms of the severity of the disease. Clinical expression of HE is variable and can differ between individuals of the same family, even with identical mutations. Common HE and asymptomatic carriers can have no or minimal hemolysis. Homozygous HE and HPP usually have severe hemolysis. Spherocytic HE is a rare phenotype and is considered a hybrid of hereditary elliptocytosis and hereditary spherocytosis. SAO is an asymptomatic condition that can have mild hemolysis. At the microscope, mild HE with no or compensated hemolysis will show prominent uniform elliptocytes, with the cells being more elliptical than oval. In most patients, over 75% of the cells will be elliptical, but over 30% is expected. Very elongated cells are characteristics and can constitute more than 10% of cells. Infants with mild HE and poikilocytosis of infancy usually have prominent poikilocytosis, microspherocytes, fragmentation, budding of cells, and variable degrees of elliptocytosis. However, by one to two years, the morphology will change to characteristic mild HE. Rare patients with homozygous HE or HPP will have marked microspherocytes, poikilocytosis, fragments, and very few elliptocytes. Spherocytic HE morphology is variable and has less prominent elliptocytosis with spherocytes and microspherocytes. The proportion of spherocytes and elliptocytes varies. SAO will have very distinctive red cell morphology with the elliptocytes being rounded and oval. Often they will have a large transverse bar that divides the central pallor area. As an aside, when the red cells are produced, they are in the standard red cell discoid shape. Under the sheer force and stress of circulation, the cells distort and gradually lose their ability to return to that shape, which is why you will see normal cells on this mirror, even though all the cells have an abnormality. The CBC for mild HE with compensated and uncompensated hemolysis will have an MCV that is usually normal or slightly elevated due to the associated reticulocytosis. The MCH and MCHC are within normal range. In infants with HE and poikilocytosis of infancy, the MCV may be decreased and the MCHC will be either normal or slightly elevated. For HPP patients, the MCV is decreased and the MCHC is usually elevated. Mild HE with mild compensated hemolytic anemia will have a slight reticulocytosis and a decreased haptoglobin. And severe cases of spherocytic HE and HE with infantile poikilocytosis, homozygous HE and HPP will have features of extravascular hemolysis 
due to the spleen removing abnormal cells. Patients with mild HE, no splenomegaly, and those with SAO usually have benign disorder and require no clinical intervention. Patients with HE and uncompensated hemolysis usually benefit from splenectomy, which is also the treatment option used for HPP and spherocytic HE patients. Patients with HE and infantile poikilocytosis are treated symptomatically because they will improve spontaneously with development and have a picture indistinguishable for mild HE. Now you and I both know hereditary elliptocytosis. This process started out as wanting to learn more about Southeast Asian oval cytosis and turned into this. To continue your hematology journey, check out this video here. Subscribe for future deep dives. Thank you for watching. Until next time.